Yes, yes, yes. Today we have another beautiful breakdown of Back in July, the song that is done by J Rocks and it also features Delish Matthews and uh, Roberto. So, yeah, uh, this song was the first version was produced by J Rocks, which was just him alone. Then uh, he decided to add Delish Matthews, and then later on, he also had uh, Roberto on the remix. Um, this song was origi- originally song which I first saw this song first when he played it, I think on his WhatsApp or Instagram, I don't remember exactly. But I told him, like, oh, I like the sound, can you please uh, drop the files by? So he dropped the files, uh, he gave me his vision, and he had already produced it. And then as we were talking, he said, you know what? Feel free to add anything you feel like can work for the song. Just do what do what you can. You know, Jay is an open mm-hmm. person, and but he also carries a vision. So uh, that gave me some creative freedom to add three or four elements in this song just to beef it up. Because uh, Jay takes a minimalistic approach to production. It, it's like he believes in less is more. He wants his voice to shine not only let the music shine so he wants his voice most of the time to be the instrument with a few things around him so yeah um also worth noting that i mixed in i mix things in context of the song so i don't just put things on my channel strip because i got some questions last time on how i mixed uh, the previous video i posted how i did some how i ended up making some decisions i do things in context and to see what will work for the for that particular song and uh, also what the artist tells me to do so pretty much this is the whole session here uh, i'm using studio, persona studio one which is like my go-to these days okay it's been my go-to for about six seven years i should think so because i started in studio one too but i've been unable to use that for a while so this is like my go to like for the past six seven years just mixing yeah so yep uh without further ado let's go through the session and let's learn let's break it down so um yeah jay originally did these drums so we're going to move all the processing here and worth noting one thing worth noting is that i mix and bust things up so we've got the drum bass which is just specifically for the drums and then we've got an eq bass and a synth and keys bass which i just used to control the low end sometimes some frequencies and also sometimes i do compress the keys but i had done enough compression on individual tracks that I don't need to compress here then on the bass as usual I just use like an expander for me it helps me control the low end pretty much and I have a parallel chain for the drums which will go through as as we mix and then also all the music is burst into the all music bass so the drums the kicks the synths are burst to this the uh, group track and then they all go into the submix which is if you notice i told you last time i've got four so i choose which piece sometimes works for me i have four that i go for like i understand it and also a maximizer here then finally we go into the final mix bus which i just use the nls for the, for the tone and also a limiter here I actually added the limiter now just to help us with the overall volume. So my mixing is I mix I mix in context of the song. So these are the original drums sent as sent to me by Jerox. So when I listened to these drums, I was like, we need to do more. I need to do more because Jay wanted the drums beefed up. Okay. So I started with um, the kick. I used the Puitech, so I I mixed one. D- I boosted one dB at 60 hertz, 
okay boosted one db i also boosted um uh 3 db at uh, 5 kilohertz i think this is just to give it a bit of meat like the mid section so this is this is before when i add the eq in and also it's worth noting that you need to gain stage sometimes you need to make sure when you eq you or compress you don't let you don't use compression and DQ as a way of adding volume it's uh, a way of you need to make sure that the way I've leveled stuff the way your volume the way you listen to stuff should remain that way and also I have this kick this EQ so with the EQ without oh sorry without and with sorry so let's say without and with so they beefed they gave me like the eq just made my kick more subby of which i was looking for which you'll be able to understand later on in the process so i layered i put my own kick as a layer here to just beef it up and it sounds so ugly but when when I put the process in, you understand what I mean. So pretty much did the same thing. This time I boosted uh, three three dB at sixty, and then I just shaped up the bandwidth for the wanted to to head to the broad 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 bandwidth, but I decided just to keep it minimal, and then I boosted two dB at five kilohertz again. So it's just the meat thing that the meat gritty that I was looking for. You notice the difference and also I pretty much just copy and paste copied and pasted that same drum preset that I had on the other kick. So without with but I was looking for more. I wanted I wanted the whole thing to be rounded up. So I added the R base and uh just pretty much just a default setting and just brought down the the, uh, the gain and then so with so without and with so we get that subby kick and then remember i told you like i had a parallel chain so i needed i needed the kick to be subby you know i needed i need i don't didn't need it to cut through as much as this other kick was this had the top end I needed. This had the sub end I needed. So I put down one eight. This is like one twenty three heads because I I wanted the bottom only, the sub element, and removed all the high element from the kick. So this is a parallel chain. Remember I told you about this, and then I added an the R base again 40 hertz this time reduced again just by negative 2.9 so if we listen to it with the parallel we now have that base base so if you play if you move with without i mean yeah mundele recommend in indubana without so if we remove all the plugins put them back So we get that subby kick, subby kick, like it punches through. And the reason why I did that is we have the bass here. If I play without the process I did and with the bass, so the kick is compensating for the bass so for me that's that's the thing i was looking for i needed that like the sub element to be there because i did not we did not want it to be super snappy you know then on the bass i think these are no eight, eight or eight it was jay played this one so with the eight with the bass what i did is i just compressed so i move the compressor here i enable it 
just controlling 3db you know just like 3db controlling the bass at 3db and yeah that's what i needed so remember the bass is going to its own uh, low end bus so if we remove this expander add it back we have a, con a completely controlled signal so we we we're not fluctuating up and down or doing this and that we have got total control and we are yeah we are perfectly there for this one i don't know why i put this compressor i think i was trying to convert this snare into mono because it's not doing anything yeah then uh, we also i also use the pro eq my intention with this one was we had some frequencies here which were uh, ringing in my ear so i decided to remove them because i also had to make room for another snare for two more snares in fact so this is just now but you can hear that we are, we were looking for a bit of a subby not snappy sound so i layered it with uh, this nail so with this nail we had like a lot of room so i had i had to use a transient master by uh, i came out immediately so if we play this in context of the song Remove it. We control the room so we don't get that room sound with the snare because the snare sample sounded like it had it was played live. Then we I added this um no, actually it's another snare, but where is it? Yeah. This is another snare, didn't do any processing on it. Then there is this percussive element, a blip. I added that in. So I layered like one, two, three, two snares, and then one percussive element to jazz, kick, and kick and snare, just to make it work in context of the song. So then the hi hat. So remember everything is being done in context of the song let's remove the processing add it back in you know you can't lie to your ears when you hear like things are sitting in properly that's how it, like that's that's perfect now on like i said on the bus on the bus for keys and synths i didn't do any compression because I went heavy on compression when it comes to, when it came to the individual sounds. Because Jay wanted things to be seated like in a certain way, like everything needed to have its own place. So uh, he played this bell. It's just labeled I iron bell, iron bell. Yeah. So. So what's here is I spread it. Let's play, let's play it before and after. So Jay wanted it to be in a more controlled space. So I spread it. Then I use the brain rex solid state sslg bx console so for this one i think it was a the intention was to get the high end you know the just snap so i added uh 7g 7 db i mean a gb you know at 8 kilohertz which is just like the default one here this is just a default for this setting and then also added the high mid frequency removed some high mid, some frequency at 886 which i didn't like and then Boosted at 93 by 4 dB. So, also worth to note that actually cut the 145 or 145 somewhere there, and also brought back a bit of highs because I wanted did it to be controlled and not let the high end bleed out. So, 
So the intention is to make sure that the instruments and everything sit in context with the mix. So, and then we I added the 76, 11, 76. This was a preset I had for a pad. Let me even put in a thing. Yeah, it was my starting point for like a pad or something. Then I saved it because I usually save this one. I like what I do. I say, okay, I'll save it and I'll tweak it in the next one. So this one was pretty much it. Pretty much it. Yeah. Remember, even the previous video, I made this mistake. So this is pretty much it. <laughs> I think I need to stop using English. So I, I pretty much just went heavy on this. And so from this. To this so remember what I said the compression was so heavy that the only thing I had to do was EQ then I played this uh, rod thing Initially, this was a guitar, but um, while installing my, because I've, while installing my, uh, what's that, while installing my native instruments, I have contact 5 and contact 6, so that guitar now is updated to contact 6, so now I can't, if I open this one, I'll ch I don't know, I feel like I'll change a few things, so I said, okay, you know what, let me just throw the, the thing here, but this initially was a guitar, which I also went hard in, compressed, and did a lot of, a lot of cutting, you know, 155 off, so that everything needs to have room in the mix, that's the thing, the idea is to have, to give it room, not to make it sound, not everything needs to be audible, or, let me, let me play it solo. So you see So that's that's the intention. The intention is to make sure that everything is audible and you're getting everything that you want to hear and put them in a space so that it works it works in context with the music. So Jay had already played this guitar here. The guitar here, so for the guitar, I just got the guitar, like rhythm guitar preset here. That's it, I didn't do anything. Because they had already processed it and I only needed it to cut through the highs. So this was the thing I was looking for. So it just gave me a ting, ting, ting. And yeah. And then I added this uh, sign. This sign wave is like the default sign wave. Uh, uh for fm8 so i used just to that sound this one so and then jay had already played like this one which I just EQ'd, compressed. Did I even compress this one? I don't think I did any heavy compression on this one. I was kind of like, no, I compressed. Look at how heavy I went in. Wow. So if I remove the processing, like the whole music processing sounds like this. Remember what I said, it's in context with the mix, with the song. So whatever you do, you have to make decisions and say, okay, this is going to sit perfectly. Not, no, he did that. I'm, when I do it in an Afitana, it's going to be like that. But it's not how it works. It's in context with the song. So let's go. Put them back in. So we move to the vocals now. 
with the vocals Jay had already tuned these vocals he had already pre-tuned these vocals because Jay likes himself to sound in a certain way so when he brought these files it was just the way that he went in you know so uh, I pretty much just used 110 for each vocal except for the Roberto backing I think no this is delish except for delish I needed to do some make you just to match the microphones yeah so back in July because this recorded somewhere else like where she is back in Namibia so I just got the vocals and I needed to make sure I match the microphones to make them ah, sorry the mic moved I needed to make sure I, I'm I mic I, I match the microphone sorry so I just use pretty much just one chain one chain for all the vocals back in July ten daddy ten back in July then Jamanja ten ten back in July so what the I started I removed 20 heads boosted about 6k on this channel that was it back in July ten daddy ten back in July because I just wanted that up Top end scene. Back in July, ten tedari ten te back in July. Then Jamanja ten ten back in July. So just the top end scene shining there. Then I compressed with the uh, 76. Back in July, ten tedari ten te back in July. Then Jamanja ten ten back in July. Ten tedari ten ten back in. And then I added the CLA vocals. I think yeah. So for this one we use I used it for the reverb delay and also to widen the vocals a bit so back in july ten tedari ten te back in july then jamanja ten ten back in july ten tedari ten so initially i used this as uh something to send just to jay to listen but he liked it so i was like he likes it i can't replicate it again and start doing up a send so i'll just leave it as it is then i added the limiter just to increase some modability with his vocals back in july ten tedari ten te back in july so if we do before back in july ten tedari ten te after back in july ten tedari ten te and then the usual process the uh, deboxing and also the eq back in july ten yeah, and eq the dsa back in july ten tedari ten te back in july then jamanja ten ten back in july ten tedari ten ten back in july then jamanja ten ten man of the moment but me that they can't see the things i've been to look up street of problem been to weber camba sitting on a miss ringa yes so change i've been to look up street of problem me realize me realizing that that me then we had delish so with uh delicious vocals um it was minimal processing. This is like uh, the web tuner, so it was just like minimal processing. They call me D money, stay stunning. Everywhere the girl go, she make money. They cannot see nothing when I'm gunning. African bad girl, she a running. Me realize, me realizing that that the guys they got the eyes intact on this top burner. Some turn up, see me when the girl. Oh. Be on that wavy level. Oh, oh. So Jay backed her up here. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Cause you wanted it to be more sustained. So. Oh, oh. We be on that wavy level. Oh, oh. And then the Roberto vocal, we just pretty much threw it here. Danger, danger, danger. Better watch your friends, there could be danger. Why you raise your hand for a signal? Somebody shoot it down with a fun call. Yeah, cause nobody wants to see your success. If they not getting something, yeah, if you believe that you can achieve it, yeah. There's one vocal I like on the show. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So I transpose these vocals because it just sent like one vocal. Now I needed to, yeah. I needed to make sure like I give it beef so it goes like. Sha -la 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 -la. Yeah. Hey, sha -la -la -la. So at least we, we, beefed, we beefed those vocals up. So when I 
This is one voice. Just transpose them. This one by 12. This one by lower it down by negative 12. And that's pretty much the whole mix. And then the usual. I use this meter sometimes. So for the master, and I mastered it on a different project again, because to the one has got a mastering now uh, option. So I can master it just in studio one. So I mastered on another session. This one I think I mastered it in logic, I should think so, because it took some days for Vox to approve the mix. As you know, it's like I said, it's particular. So it, it actually brought me back like twice, you no, know, do the backings here, there, there, which I like. And I, all my clients know that they have to do it. Because if I just mix a song and you say, okay, it's perfect, there are some songs and people just love them when I'm done with them. But some others, some specific people sit down and just say, okay, you know what, uh, can you, can we do this better? Can we do that better? Yeah, so that, that's, this is the whole entire mix of back in July and it was, less is more pretty much. Again, let's try to remove all the processes. Activate. It all started out back in July. back in July. So this is the whole mix of back in july by jerox pretty much thanks guys uh, you can like this video subscribe to this video and uh follow me on uh, instagram at paul cruz cruz with a k-r-u-z one and uh, you can make your request to what you want to see from me i may do for you so you can like subscribe follow me paul cruz one the same handle for twitter again uh, see you in the next video guys I think next video we can break down Roberto's uh, beautiful I need to talk to him to see if he's going to approve it because I can't just break uh, let this creativity creative process come out without the artist's approval so I need to ask Roberto and the more artists approve of me breaking down the mixes the better for both you me and the whole zambian music community so guys thank you very much africa music community too thank you very much guys see you in the next video shalom shalom don't forget like subscribe follow me on instagram and let's connect guys one love shalom <laughs>